Hello everyone and welcome back to the video series Computer Science Study Guide. Uh, today we're going to cover module 19 which deals with network security and troubleshooting. So if you do find this video useful, please smash that like button, leave us a comment, and if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe. If you're unable to leave a comment or press the like or leave a like for us, means you do not you're not signed in please sign in if you don't have an account go ahead and create yourself a YouTube account it is free and takes less than a minute once you've done that you're able to subscribe to channels leave comments and like other videos now once you're signed in it's easier for you to navigate and subscribe to your favorite uh, youtubers so that you can easily navigate and find their material or find other materials similar All right so with that in mind Let's dive on into module 19, starting with question number one. Question number one, what network protocol allows devices to discover and communicate with each other on the network without the need for manual configuration or user intervention? So the first uh, possible answer is static IP address. That is incorrect. That's simply setting up a device with the same IP address because usually it's being shared throughout the network. So if it's a network shared hard drive or a media server or an FTP server or even a printer, uh, if you, you would set a static IP address so that you're not uh, getting DHCP, get a new IP address every time you turn it off and turn it on or if that lease runs out whether it's one day, three days or a week. If you do that, you're going to have to keep on resetting, finding that IP address and sharing it again on all those devices. So easier, either way to avoid that is set the static IP address. So that is not the correct answer. Uh, QoS, which stands for quality of service, that's incorrect. Also, quality of service simply allows you to uh, prioritize what uh, devices or what applications get uh, the network bandwidth uh, first. So you prioritize certain devices over others to get network priority All right and then DHCP reservations that is also incorrect that's just uh, your computer your DHCP server whether it's on your router your gateway or you actually have a DHCP server uh, wherever it is it's assigning IP addresses uh, leasing them out to different devices on your network uh, so they'll renew whatever time you set uh, sometimes I think the default for a lot of DHCP settings are DHCP reservation leases are for 24 hours so the ones that are not set static they're getting a new IP address within your network range uh, every 24 hours or if you have it set I know in a classroom it's set for three days All right so the correct answer for this is universal plug-and-play right so that allows you to discover and communicate with each other on the network so if someone comes up it'll automatically pick them up you don't have to restart anything uh, on the network or any devices all right, so the correct answer for number one is universal plug and play. All right, let's go on to number two, question number two, which is so we covered this one a bit in question one. If a printer connected to your local network does not get a dynamically assigned IP address for the DHCP server, an IP address can be manually configured. What type of address is this? So a, a dynamic IP address is incorrect. That's what you would get from uh, your, your DHCP server if you're not static IP address. So that's the opposite of a static IP address. That's incorrect. Private, private IP address, that's also incorrect. Uh, those are the ones that if you check your network at home or in your office or whatnot, uh, those are uh, certain uh, IP addresses that are set up that are not assigned by your I by your ISP or internet service provider. And then your public IP address is opposite of a private IP address. That's your actual IP address that your ISP or internet service provider provider assigns you. In order, it's like a phone book or it's like a telephone number. There's only one person can have the same uh, public IP address, right? So that is your real IP address that the ISP identifies you and the rest of the world identifies your net, your your service by All right so the correct answer for number two is static IP address you would have to set that manually and it would stay the same so that if you're sharing a device you're not have to go and find it every time the DHCP assigns it a new IP address so static IP address is done and the correct answer for question number two once again is static IP address or static IP All right let's go on to question number three 
Question number three, what can be done to prevent your wireless SSID from showing up on a list of available networks? So set channel to 2.412 gigahertz. That is incorrect. <laughs> That's not gonna do anything. Um, next one is disable guest network. Same thing, that is not the correct answer. That's not gonna do anything. However, if you disable your SSID broadcast, then your network won't be broadcast. So it won't disable it. All it's gonna do is uh, not broadcast it. So if someone knows your SSID, they can still log on. But if someone going by searching for networks, they won't be able to find it because it's not broadcasted. So it makes it more secure. Uh, and then change the firewall settings, that is the incorrect answer. That's That'll help security purposes or uh, control security, but not uh, access All right so the correct answer for question three is disable SSID broadcast alright next question question number four Cody is signing into corporate network by using a VPN or virtual private network using this method the VPN encrypts and protects data from when it leaves his computer until it reaches a server on the corporate network. What is the process referred to as? All right, so when you're using a VPN, you'll see this all the time, that the process is re referred to as tunneling, all right? Tunneling, basically you're going through, using the internet uh, as a tunnel, you're tunneling through the internet, so to speak, all right? Uh, the internet options is not correct, Hash is not correct, nor is set the channel to 2.412 gigahertz A. <laughs> so the correct answer for question four is tunneling. So just remember, tunneling and VPN go together. All right, on to question number five. A technician is in the process of installing a program that would assist her with her work in the office. The technician unknowingly downloads the program from an unsafe website. Luckily, the installation is canceled due to an internal source on her computer that also prevents her computer from attacking other computers. What was the application? All right, so once again, the first answer, Windows Defender Firewall. That is the device that is the correct answer. Windows Defender Firewall is a software firewall that comes with Windows. Uh, it's built into Windows. I believe it, start, it started being used in Windows 7. So Windows 7, 8, and Windows 10 has it. And it is uh, the, the default settings itself will block a lot of simple uh, malicious software. All right. The other answers, uh, VPN or virtual private network, we just talked about that. That's connecting to another location uh, by using the internet, uh, by tunneling through a secure connection over the internet. Tracker, same thing as tracking a device that's not correct. And hash is not correct as well. All right. So the correct answer for number five, once again, is Windows Defender Firewall. So let's go on to question number six. So Jeanette has just finished setting up the modem within the corporate office and would like to connect several devices to the modem at once in an organized method. She needs something that can change the traffic between all the networks. What would help to facilitate this scenario? So a proxy server is the first, uh, the first possible answer. That is incorrect. A proxy server will help uh, uh, filter internet traffic and also help it become ro more robust, r robust and help you get to sites a little bit quicker as managing and blocking sites. So that would not help in this instance. Uh, tracker is the same thing. A tracker can help you locate devices, uh, but it's not going to help here. Zigbee. Zigbee is technology for Internet of Things that you can connect to the internet with uh, a protocol. So if you got lights, smart lights, smart refrigerators or whatever, uh, a lot of times they can use Zigbee uh, to connect. All right, instead of Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, something very similar, just a way of connecting to uh, uh, connected devices. All right, so that is incorrect. So the correct answer would be a router. All right, so question six, the correct answer would be a router. All right. So now moving on to question number seven. 
Steve noticed that Jeanette finished setting up some equipment in the office but realized she forgot to connect the rest of the wired devices on a local network. What device can he connect the equipment in order to fix the problem? So the first possible answer is router. That's incorrect. Uh, you can if the router has a built-in switch in it. So hint, hint. <laughs> so the router, that is incorrect. Virtual private network VPN, that's not a physical thing if it's more than one devices. Uh, so that doesn't apply there. And proxy server, the same thing. Uh, so the correct answer is a switch. So like I, when I said at the beginning about the router, um, a router, if you have a router at home from the, your ISP, or your internet service provider, you might have some switch ports. So that that particular device is a router with a built-in switch. So those ports on the on the switch, you know, or those ports on the router, that's basically is acting as a switch as well. So the correct answer would be a switch. So connect those more than uh, more than one. If you have multiple cables, you can use a switch to help manage those and connect to extend that network. All right. So the correct answer for number seven is a switch. All right, so now moving on to question number eight. Bill is attempting to connect his new phone to his Wi-Fi network, but is having trouble enabling the connection to his home network. What can he use to connect his phone? So the first, the first possible answer are VPN, virtual private network. Uh, that's not going to help Bill uh, at all. He has to be connected first to use a VPN. He can't connect to a VPN for internet connection right away, right? So the router, that's also incorrect. He's using his phone. Uh, if he's just using a router, he's directly connected into it with his phone. There's no device for that yet. So the correct answer for question number eight is a wireless access point or WAP. So the wireless access point, if you, know, if you know that, it sends a signal. So if you have a phone which doesn't have an Ethernet port, uh, he's able to connect uh, through radio waves through a wireless access point. So the, the correct answer for number eight is wireless access point. Now a switch would not work. Same reason why a router wouldn't work because he doesn't have an Ethernet port on his phone. So he has a wireless, uh, wireless adapter or a, a wireless NIC card. So the correct answer again for question eight is WAP or wireless access point. All right. So let's move on down to question number nine. And question number nine: Stephen is having a hard time finding a network to connect to, in uh, to his new laptop. What should he be looking for in order to get properly connected? So. The first possible answer is blacklist. That's incorrect. So a blacklist is basically a list of devices or, or network or locations that are not welcome. All right. So they put you on a bad list. Avoid these IP addresses or avoid these areas uh, on the internet. So that's blacklist. You, can, you heard of getting blacklisted. Now when it comes to the next possible answer, whitelist, it's the exact opposite of blacklist. So if you've got a proxy server and you want to list a, a amount of uh, websites that you want, if you want to go the, the hard security way and only list the websites that are allowed or the IP addresses that are allowed, you would put them on the whitelist. And that'll be all that you're allowed to access. All right? Channel does not get it either. You're not going to look for a channel, but you're going to look for the SSID or service set identifier. So that is the name of that network. Like if someone comes to your home and they say, hey, what's your Wi-Fi password and what's the name of the network? I want to connect to your internet. You would give them the name of the internet. Hey, it's, it's you know, such and such home family internet. And then here's the password. Or you could say, hey, I'll type it in for you. But they could always go back and look at it. But the correct answer for question number nine is service set identifier or SSID. All right. Finally, on the last... Question number 10. On number 10, a user calls in about an issue they are having on their computer. In order to remotely control the user's computer, the help desk technician requires the user's IP address. Which of the following would provide the IP address? So the first answer is the correct answer, your IP config. The IP config command gives the IP address, default gateway, and several other network uh, uh, information. 
if you want to get uh, all the network information, you would do ipconfig space slash all, and it will give you all the network information that you would normally ask for. Uh, going down the list, the ping command allows you to see if you have connectivity to a specific website or a specific IP address. So you can type a URL, host name, or a IP address in for the ping command. All right. The SSH protocol or secure shell protocol is just a secure uh, way of connecting to a device remotely. And Kerberos is just security for uh, CYANN, for, for instance, for secure shell. It's a security protocol. All right. So the correct answer for number 10, once again, is your IP, is IP config. All right. So we'd like to thank you again for joining us on the Computer Science Study Guide series. Uh, if you have not done so, uh, please smash the like button and leave a comment and if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe so you can see when we post new videos uh, we'll see you soon uh, take care and thanks again for joining have a wonderful day